Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Just a quick reminder that I do giveaways every single week so if you're interested I'll tell you exactly how to enter later on in the video. That said, we have some malicious compliance stories and our first story of the day is by One Step 420 You want me to rip down power and telephone lines? Alrighty then. My husband is a truck driver in the woods. He loads up the logs on the trailer and in the wood. He loads up the logs on the trailer in the woods and then drives to the wood mill to deliver. My husband works for a small company where the owner is so hands off it doesn't make any sense. His famous last words were, do the best you can. Hubby had some trailer issues so he unloaded and called his boss to let him know he was going to need someone to come and remove his trailer stakes so he can drive down the road to bring the trailer to get fixed. Now his boss told him that he was not paying someone to come and remove the stakes. Now let me explain the trailer my husband used. It was 12 feet wide and the stakes were 14 feet high. This was a massive trailer used for off-road use. You're not supposed to drive on the main roads with it. The boss just told him to drive the freaking thing to the shop. So Hobby mentioned the electric lines and the telephone lines. The boss said, you'll be fine, you won't touch the lines, just get it to the shop. His boss has never driven a truck. He just owns them and expects everyone to just take care of themselves when there's a breakdown. So Hubby said, fine, but don't blame me if everyone loses electricity, including yourself. So Hubby left the wood yard and started driving to the shop. It was about a two hour drive to get from the wood yard to the shop. Before Hubby left, he warned me that we will most likely lose power. I was like, oh, okay. I was planning on going to go grocery shopping anyway. So I decided I was going to go to town. On my way to town, the power lines were down in front of our old principal's house. He was outside trying to direct traffic and was trying to figure out who the guy was that was driving the pink maroon truck. We both hated this man. He should not have been allowed to work with children and teenagers. He used to tell my husband that he would never amount to anything by looking out a window. So I stopped and old principal was trying to explain that a truck hit the lines and he was trying to figure out who it was. So I looked at him dead in the face and told him it was one of the students that would never amount to anything just looking out a window and I just drove on. So the shop was on my way to town and I decided to stop in and see if hubby and the guys needed coffee and his boss was there screaming at hubby because his wife has no power and couldn't go on Facebook. So I watched hubby get reamed out. Then my husband pulls out his phone showing that boss told him to drive down and to do the best he could. The boss shut up for a moment, let hubby fix his trailer. The utility companies came and repaired and figured out who the truck belonged to. The boss got a bill for over $150,000 to repair the downed lines and broken poles. The reason I know how much the bill was was because he left it on the counter in the office and I saw it when I went to collect my husband's last check because he was done with the boss's BS. My husband was the only driver he had that would make him money, and hubby always drove the crap nobody else wanted to drive. So let me give you guys a hypothetical. If you were driving this truck and you got stuck like OP's husband did, and you knew your two options were as follows. Drive back knocking down power lines and poles, or two, try and find a different ride out of there and just kind of leave the thing behind. Which of those two things would you prefer to do? You can also assume that the boss is also pressuring you to drive back. Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Fun with a Llama. No respect for me spending my free time with a friend? Fine, I'll ruin your date night with your boyfriend. I share a house with three roommates, all girls. To keep things neat, we have a rolling cleaning schedule. And the agreement is that each week we clean one part of the house according to said schedule. I'm the one that stays most weekends while the others tend to go home, so while they fret to do their bit of cleaning on Friday afternoon, I usually chill and do it whenever I feel like it on the weekend, as long as it's done by Monday. One weekend, one of my roommates didn't go home and was having her boyfriend over. So Friday afternoon rolls in, I invite a friend to spend the weekend and we're watching a movie on the couch around 6pm. 
Roommate walks into the living room and tells me I need to clean the bathroom. I say I'll do it tomorrow as I have a friend over and we're busy. She insists that she wants it clean for when her boyfriend arrives in an hour. I say if you want it clean before I get to it, you can go clean it. I'll do it tomorrow when I'm not watching a movie with a friend. She said no, you need to do it now. Then it started sparking in my mind. I told her, okay, I'll do it tonight. She left the room very happy with herself. My friend looks at me like I'm mad. I waited until our movie was finished. Roommate kept staring daggers at me while she had dinner with her BF. I waited until they went to her room around 11 p.m. And then I pulled out all the cleaning supplies and took over the bathroom. I played loud music and dropped an absurd amount of bottles and empty buckets to make noise, hit the vacuum cleaner against the radiator pipes, it's attached to the wall between her room and the bathroom, vacuumed for ages, then decided to also vacuum the hallway and there seemed to be a pesky amount of dust right in front of her door. How weird. Then went back to mop and did the same. I poured pipe cleaner down the shower drain and a sign that the shower was out of order for 24 hours to let it sink in. I cleaned the mirror with a product I knew will leave streaks all over. Next day, roommate was super mad. Couldn't shower after fun time with her boyfriend because of the pipe cleaner. Couldn't use the bathroom, but also couldn't say I hadn't cleaned it. She was furious. I had a good laugh with my friend, and roommate never gave me crap about cleaning on Fridays again. If you're going to have like a written rule here or a pretty clearly defined chore wheel type thing, you can't act like somebody's going to be a maid and clean up whenever you want them to. They'll do it probably at the last second they're allowed to. Let's just be real. This next story is by Dark Knight 1993. My five-year-old daughter found a loophole. Last night, I walked into my daughter's room and it was a mess, so I told her to clean up. I came back 20 minutes later and the room still wasn't clean so I said to her, clean your room, I'm coming back in 20 minutes, anything that's still on the floor I'm throwing away. 20 minutes passed and I went back in her room. She picked up all her toys but still had paper and a box. She picked up all her toys but still had paper and a box from a new toy on the floor. I say, pick up this trash and throw it away. She says, you told me anything I don't pick up, you were going to throw away, so I left all the trash on the floor. I said, well, crap. Well, at least you're positive they were very closely listening to you. That's pretty good comprehension from that kid. Although, it does seem like when you ask kids of this age things like this or say things like that, they're able to really latch on to the proper meaning and kind of work like a loophole without ever actually trying to get around what intentions you meant. This next story is by Long Suffering Squid. Whatever you say, hotshot. By request, this is a retail hack story. The background. I used to work for a company that manufactured custom window dressings. As is the nature with many custom products, you better make sure you have all the specifications correct before you begin production because if you don't, then you'll have to start over again and consign to the dumpster the incorrect parts that had already been made. When I first started, I was assigned to the regional training store. Now, however heckish it was, every one employee who came out of that store was better trained than anyone else in the district. The training that happened in the other stores wasn't bad per se. We were held to the highest standards so that we could go forth and train new hires and acceptable standards. Time passes and I am eventually transferred to a backwater store working with two women as well trained as I was. I worked there for a few years and we got to know each other's styles and shorthands. We worked to acceptable standards because, frankly, that's all that was necessary, but we still managed to have the lowest average error rate in the district. And key, we always, always double checked each other's work before sending the orders to production. The setup. Enter Hotshot. Hotshot was a young woman transferred to our store. We were a low-volume, self-sufficient store, so it was a bit unusual, but not impossible, for us to be sent a fourth person. Well, Hotshot came in like she owned the place. 
According to her, she was on the fast track to management and she'd have been sent to our store as an opportunity to cut her teeth as a supervisor. Specifically because our store had been run so well for years without a manager. The three of us shrugged. We didn't really care for the same exact reason. All Hotshot had to do was not screw up. The compliance. At some point during the first week, Hotshot questioned the quality of our double checking. I want us all to adhere to the highest standards when double checking each other's work. I exchanged glances with the two other women. Well, usually we just go along to get along. Hotshot says, no, no, no. Hold me to the highest standards when checking work. I need to understand how you all operate. The compliance and fallout. Later that day, I'm double checking my coworkers' orders, per usual, and I come across one of Hotshot's orders. I start checking her work, and I bet you can't guess, dear reader, who was only trained in acceptable standards. And her work was okay as far as acceptable standards went, but not as far as the company's highest standards. I stopped counting the number of errors I found after I hit a dozen. Hotshot noticed what I was doing and, shocked and indignant, snatched the paperwork out of my hands and told me I was never to check her work again. The Epilogue Hotshot was loud, bossy, and a troublemaker. All three of us complained individually to her boss about this. Eventually, it came out that Hotshot was, in fact, hot crap. Being sent to our store wasn't her opportunity to shine, it was her last chance to keep her job. She didn't last long. Years later, I learned she did, finally, manage to get her act together though. Well, although Hotshot was floundering and sinking to the bottom, at least in the end they were able to finally get their act together and become some kind of productive employee. For how negative this person was in the story, there's a good ending for them. This next story is by Spongebob No Pants. Want me to do something even though it's a bug in the system? Let the games begin. Backstory. I worked for three months during Christmas at a retail store. My wife was a middle manager and they needed some help in the inventory and stock room. My company was just getting off the ground. My chosen field was all but dead, so why not work a few months? Anyways, I got put in the back during the day. For six hours during my shift at the top of the hour, I would use a PDA to pull the items from the storeroom so the floor could put them on the shelf. The basis behind the system was as things were sold, it was pulled from the back and, if possible, it would keep the shelves full. Just one problem, it had a major glitch. If you logged something into the back room, then it will want you to pull it back the next hour. And it was awful. Put one can of green beans into the back room inventory, and the next hour it will tell you to pull 500 cans, for example. So basically, the morning truck shift would put in the back anything that didn't fit on the shelves. So at noon, it would tell me to pull all of it down. So we used a burn system. Basically, we told it, only when it glitched, that we pulled it and there were more shelves in that location. Easy enough, and it worked. I only had to do that on the first pull of my shift. Anything from the floor that needed to be put back, I did after the hourly pulls were done. The hourly pulls were only done seven times a day. The opening guys would then burn those that needed it. Clean, efficient system. Until we got a new manager. First day, that manager tore me a new one. I was not allowed to burn any pulls and was not allowed to have any back stock sitting. If it came back, I had to immediately shelve it and any pulls the system listed were to be pulled. This turned into a giant cluster truck. Instead of the sales floor having a small cart every hour, I was forced to use pallets. All the back stock from the truck went out on the first pull and when 99% of that came back, it went back on the shelves and was pulled back the next hour. Hmm, the PDA says that I need to pull 150 gallons of bleach. Well, I only have 60 on the shelf, so here are all of them. It got bad. Pallets all over the store. The sales floor spent all their time trying to stock this stuff, so nothing got cleaned. It was a nightmare. Everyone was pissed and the manager couldn't understand why nothing was getting cleaned. This went on daily, 7 days a week, 
for almost a month. The end of this came the day corporate did their yearly visit. So I'm back there and just got done with the pulls. There are 8 pallets for 6 sections. The corporate guy for inventory came back to talk to me and we discussed the glitch. Turns out they were aware of it and they started the burn system themselves until they could fix it. Also that's why I had 2 hours at the end of my shift to backstock what needed to be backstocked. Needless to say, he wasn't happy. While the manager was technically correct according to store policy, they made an exemption because of the bug, which I might add, they tried to fix later and made matters worse. The manager didn't last long because of that and other things. So I think a good manager is able to adapt to a variety of situations, and although store policy does say to do this thing, and although store policy did tell them to do something differently, they should have been able to identify that there was an issue here and could have gone along with what was working. They shook up something that was working flawlessly and just completely ruined it. Don't fix what isn't broken. Although it was kind of broken, but it didn't need to be fixed. To, you get what I'm saying. So quickly now, I want to explain just how to enter the giveaway. All you need to do is leave a comment on this video relevant to something you saw or heard or liked in any story in that video. That's it, you're entered, but it applies to every single video we upload this week. So to get the best odds at winning the $30 Amazon gift card giveaway, you'll want to leave a comment relating to any of those videos all week long. On Sunday, after the last video has gone out, I'll pick one comment at random and let you know on the following Monday who has won and then it starts all over again. So make sure you leave a relevant comment on this video and additionally every video I upload this week for the absolute best chance to win. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and give the videos a like too because it helps more than you could imagine. And our final story of the day is by Yak Call. One per order, fine. I'll just keep coming back then. So in New Zealand, the Golden Archers are running their Monopoly game where when you buy food, you get a certain amount of tickets per your order and you try to get all of one street to win prizes. There is also other stuff you can win and some of that is free food. Now they say you can only use one free food ticket per order, but I checked the terms and conditions and it doesn't say how many times you are allowed to order in a row or per day. So realizing I had a number of tickets for free food, I decided to get myself a free lunch. I went in and asked if I could just put through each ticket as a separate order while I stood there as their conditions say, but the server said she could only accept one at a time. So I said fine and just gave my first ticket, free cheeseburger for the win. Once that arrived, I walked outside, put it in my car and went back in. The second time I got a different person, but again they would only do the one ticket so it was fine. I gave another ticket over and got another cheeseburger. After putting that in the car, I came back in and got the original person. I assume at this stage I had been seen by a manager or team leader as when I ordered my free nuggets, I got told this was the last one. I told her that isn't what the terms and conditions say. All very nicely, don't get angry at them for doing what they are told. And I'd like to speak to the manager. The manager came over and explained to her what I was doing and she told me they had been advised it was only one ticket per day. I explained to her that it isn't what the terms say and showed her them on my phone that it says only one per order. So me leaving the store and coming back in meant that each time it was a new order as well as the orders also being separated by other people's orders in between mine. She could see she couldn't stop me from ordering as I was, so decided to just give in and let me put the rest of my tickets through, as separate orders still, all at once. All up, it took me about 20 minutes to do this and get my free food, making that lunch taste even better. Unfortunately, a good bit of that was probably cold by the time they got done with it, but hey, it was all free. It kind of reminds me of a kind of hacky situation I got myself into, where on the mobile apps you can have these deals that you can only do per order, so I would put in like 6 different unique orders so I could get the best price possible for food for me and a family member, and it ended up being absolute mayhem for the people at the store when we pulled up, because, you know, they're not supposed to actually process 6 different orders for one person coming through a drive through I think I learned my lesson about doing that again in the future, but it was worth the shot. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So, which of these stories was your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and turn notifications on if you haven't so you'll never miss an upcoming video. Any little thing that you do helps the channel grow so much more. Whether it's commenting, subscribing, or just watching the video, thank you all so very much for supporting me right here on the Storytime channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time, right here.